Well, we're beginning uh, a tour of the sites of the seven churches from the book of Revelation, chapters 2 and 3. We're going to be studying the churches. Ephesus is the first one, and then we'll, the next second letter was to the church in Smyrna, which is just north of here, uh, about an hour's drive, our time. And then further north of there is Pergamum, the third church that he wrote to. And then there's a string of churches uh, going to the southeast on a major road at that time, a trade route, uh, which was uh, from Pergamum, went to Thyatira, and then to uh, Sardis, uh, which was a major city, had a major library, and it was a seat of government at one time, and then on to uh, Philadelphia, and ultimately then to Laodicea. So those are the seven churches, and we'll be touring each one of them, and you'll be learning about the site and about the church at the time and, and about the people of the time. So uh, welcome to the tour of the seven churches. Well, we're beginning uh, a tour of the sites of the seven churches from the book of Revelation, chapters 2 and 3. And today we're at Ephesus. It's the first church that uh, the Apostle John uh, wrote the letter, dictated from Jesus, uh, to the church in Ephesus. Ephesus was really the preeminent church in Paul's day. And I want to read uh, out of Revelation 2, uh, the first few verses the account uh, that John wrote to them. He said, I know your works and your toil and your patient endurance and how you cannot bear those who are evil. I know that you are enduring patiently and bearing up for my namesake and that you have not grown weary, but I have this against you. You have abandoned the love you had at first. Remember therefore from where you have fallen and repent and do the works you did at first. This is a very significant exhortation because they had forsaken their first love. And when we understand what really happened in Ephesus, uh, it allows us to comprehend why this was a word for this church. Ephesus was really begun as a church through the Apostle John. And when uh, Paul came here several years later, he found 12 believers who had not yet been baptized uh, in the name of Jesus, and were not yet filled with the Holy Spirit. And so uh, he prayed for them, and that's exactly what happened to them. They were baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit. And that really began a revival that took place in this particular locality. Uh, Paul went into the synagogue and for three months preached, but the, when the synagogue rulers uh, began to oppose uh, him, he left the synagogue and went into what's called the School of Tyrannus, and in the school of Tyrannus, uh, he taught for two years. And it says uh, mighty miracles were done. Uh, in Acts 19, we have the account of Paul's time here in Ephesus. And mighty miracles are done just simply by taking a handkerchief or an apron that had been touched by Paul and, and taken to someone who was sick or was demon-possessed, and they were healed and delivered. And so uh, there was such an uproar uh, that uh, the idol makers in this city, and this was the seat of the temple of Artemis, a center of worldwide worship for Artemis, and the silver maker named Demetrius had, had gathered all the other craftsmen together, and they, in an uproar, uh, grabbed two of Paul's compatriots and took them to the giant stadium that seats 25,000 people, the theater uh, in the town, and uh, uh, eventually the city clerk quieted everybody down after hours of them chanting, great is Artemis of Ephesus. And finally, uh, he challenged, the clerk challenged them that they needed to uh, obey the law and take this to court if that's what they were going to do. And so the, the crowd dispersed. But the point is that there was a revival going on. Uh, magic arts people uh, came and brought their books. There were over 50,000 silver pieces worth of books that were burned. And uh, it says that the word of the Lord spread through all of Asia. And actually, Ephesus was the capital, the Roman capital of, of Asia Minor uh, during this time. Uh, it was an amazing city. It had a library that you're going to see that had uh, the third number, most number of books in the known world at that time behind Alexandria and Pergamum. And uh, it was the seat of the Roman government uh, at that time. Uh, it was an amazing place, and 
when John came here, he also brought Mary, uh, the mother of Jesus. You know, he was charged to take care of Mary. Uh, and she came here in 42 uh, AD and actually had a house here that is, there's a remnant of a home here and she died here and is buried here. And so this is, was really the center of Christianity. And you can see why birth and revival, this uh, church uh, with the miracles and with the masses of people coming to know the Lord that it was an exciting time and as the years passed as often happens following revival there can be a waning in first love devotion there can be a waning in their in their zeal for God and so we see that uh, John is writing here to this church and obviously they had forsaken their first love even though they were enduring they were doing good works they were continuing to do the work of the ministry but they forgot the one who they were doing the ministry for and their love for him and so Ephesus is a place, one of the greatest uh, uh, ruin of in modern day that we can come back and look at and see what life was like back at, uh, 2,000 years ago. We're going to be studying the churches. Ephesus is the first one, and then we'll, the next second letter was to the church in Smyrna, which is just north of here, uh, about an hour's drive, our time. And then further north of there is Pergamum, the third church that he wrote to, and then there's a string of churches uh, going to the southeast on a major road at that time, a trade route, uh, which was uh, from Pergamum, went to Thyatira, and then to uh, Sardis, uh, which was a major city, had a major library, and was a seat of government at one time, and then on to uh, Philadelphia, and ultimately then to Laodicea. So those are the seven churches, and we'll be touring each one of them during these uh, little short videos. And you'll be learning about the site and about the church at the time and, and about the people of the time. So uh, welcome to the tour of the seven churches. I'm standing in uh, Smyrna, which is the second church to which uh, the Apostle John wrote the letters to the seven churches. Smyrna at the time was uh, a leading city in the Roman world at the time of Paul, the apostle, who is thought to have started the church here. Smyrna is modern-day uh, Izmir, and it's located on the Aegean Sea. It was such a prosperous city that it contested with Ephesus and Pergamum as the leading city in Roman Asia at the time. Uh, it was a place of great commerce. This uh, market where we're standing, this agora, was the largest agora in the ancient world. Uh, the city also boasted schools of medicine and science. It was a place where Olympic type of competitions were contested. It had a theater that sat uh, over 20,000 people. And it was here that uh, a church uh, was uh, started, again, as I said, by the Apostle Paul. In the letter that the Apostle John writes, it's only one of two churches, the other church is Philadelphia, where there is no corrective rebuke that's given to this particular church. Uh, so it was a church that was doing well in that sense. The pattern in the seven churches for each letter was typically started with a revelation of Jesus, an aspect of Jesus' nature and character. And actually for this uh, particular church, it was he who is the first and the last who has died and came to life. And then typically after that, there was a commendation. And the commendation for this church was that I know your tribulation and your poverty, but that you really are rich. And you know the slander of those who say that they are Jews and are not. Do not fear that you are about to suffer. What you're about to suffer, behold, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison and you're going to be tested for 10 days. You will have tribulation, but be faithful unto death and I will give you the crown of life. And that be faithful unto death, I'll give you the crown of life is, is a, uh, an exhortation, uh, a prophetic sort of, corrective or exhortation that's given to the church and and there is no correction for this church which is uh, one of the patterns and then he promises that those who uh, endure will conquer and will not be hurt by the second death it's interesting that uh, 
one of the three major apostolic fathers. These are men that uh, followed the apostles, uh, lived here. His name was Polycarp, and he was actually appointed the bishop at the beginning of the second century, first half of the second century of uh, Smyrna. There's a church here in his honor. And Polycarp, along with Clement and Ignatius, were the three apostolic fathers. They were men who talked to the apostles, those who had been with Jesus and seen Jesus. And Polycarp was a disciple of the apostle John, and they, they believed that he was appointed as a bishop uh, by the apostle John. Uh, he uh, was a man who actually ended up being martyred here, which is prophetic in some ways with this particular letter saying that you're going to endure uh, but you're promised eternal life and when they were burning him at the stake and the fire uh, by the wind was blown away from him it's almost like it billowed like a sail away from him and the fire was not uh, killing him and so they uh, legend has it they took uh, a sword and uh, stabbed him to put him to death it's interesting and bears noting that Smyrna means myrrh, which was used in the embalming of the dead. The predictive warning of suffering in this letter to those who lived here in Smyrna, coupled with the overcoming promise in Revelation to be faithful unto death and I'll give you the crown of life, had a prophetic significance upon the Christian population in this city throughout the centuries, up to as recently as the early 1900s. Smyrna is known as the infidel city under Muslim rule, and the persecution and martyrdom of its Christian population culminated in 1922 during the liberation of Turkey from an attempted Greek occupation where tens of thousands of Armenian and Greek Christians died in what is now known as the catastrophe or burning of Smyrna. And so this is a place of... Uh, uh, historic significance. You can see it's in modern day uh, Izmir, so it's just a, a small area, almost the size of a large city park, that has the ruins yet. But it is a, a place of uh, uh, history for the early Christian church. So this is Smyrna. Here I am in the city of Pergamum which was the third church uh, to which the Apostle John wrote in the book of Revelation, chapter 2, verses 12 to 17. It's interesting that the, the cities to which uh, the seven churches were written uh, are listed geographic in order, Ephesus on the sea, and then further north to Smyrna, and then further north to Pergamum, and then there's a string of the other churches, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia and Laodicea all stretching on a major thoroughfare highway trade route to the southeast which, which is now Turkey or Asia Minor. Pergamum was a very important city uh, in the beginning of the Roman Empire it was actually the capital of Asia and then they moved the capital to Ephesus and uh, Pergamum was a city of books and learning if I, we were to characterize it. Uh, Plutarch the Greek historian and writer founded a library here uh, which became a 200,000 volume library rivaled only by the library in Alexandria in Egypt and the library was so highly renowned and valued that Mark Anthony on his marriage to Cleopatra gifted it to her and so uh, when John wrote to this church he wrote a particularly warning about those who held the teaching of Balaam and the teaching of uh, the uh, Nicolaitans. Uh, so it, being a city of books and learning, the, the, there can be a tendency uh, to forsake uh, spiritual truth and spiritual knowledge for worldly wisdom. And that may have been the case, sort of the spirit behind uh, doctrinal error, the, the doctrine of Balaam and the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. That could have been a problem. But uh, John does commend this church for holding fast uh, the faith, uh, even in the face of persecution, in which Antipas was uh, martyred. And the, so the church was uh, commended uh, for that. 
uh, the revelation of Jesus to this church was he who has the sharp two-edged sword proceeding from his mouth. In fact, the warning that, that uh, Jesus gives to this church is that those who hold doctrine or error don't repent, that uh, the, he with the sharp two-edged sword will, will come. The city being a, a city of knowledge and books and learning also is known from the fact that uh, parchment uh, was invented here as a replacement for papyrus in which to write. Parchment is made from calf skin. And so it was obviously a very innovative city. Uh, this city uh, was uh, sits on top of a hill and as you'll see from the different views, uh, commands a view, a 360 degree view of the entire area. And so uh, here we are in Pergamum. I'm standing here in uh, Thyatira which was the fourth church that John uh, wrote the letter to as dictated by Jesus in the book of Revelation chapter 2 verses 18 to 29. It's really a picture of the church that stood fast, that held fast. His word to them was, I know your works, your love and faith and service and patient endurance and that your latter works exceed the first. Only hold fast to what you have until I come. The only admonition that was given by John to this church was that they tolerated the woman Jezebel who was a furthering of uh, sexual immorality. So the problem really in this city was one of sexual immorality. There was a toleration of it. This city in its day was uh, a major uh, hub for commerce, for trades. There were trade guilds for many different types of trades, including woodworking, uh, metallurgy, uh, tanning. There was actually slave trading going on here. And the main uh, fame of this, of Theratera, was that it was a uh, hub for uh, indigo trade. and. Uh, purple dye, and actually we know from Paul's experience at uh, Philippi, he met Lydia, who was from Thyatira. She was a trader in purple, or uh, a merchant in purple dye and purple goods. Uh, the city is amazing in that it did uh, endure. It was the city that held fast. There was a Christian presence in this city from the time of uh, John the Apostle and uh, there was a Christian presence here th via the Greek Orthodox Church right up until 1922 when they were uh, deported from this particular area and so you can see the ruins here it's in the middle of uh, the modern city of Akazar and uh, so this little uh, almost the size of a public park is all that's left of the ruins of Theratira. I'm in uh, Sardis here. It's the fifth church that uh, the Apostle John wrote to in the book of Revelation chapter 3 verses 1 through 6. Sardis was a very wealthy uh, city because of the discovery of gold along the river that uh, is near here. And so it had a strong military. And because of the gold, and also located at a key place, a crossroads of a north-south trade route from uh, Pergamum down to Laodicea, and also 60 miles in east-west trade route from Ephesus. Uh, coming here through Sardis. So Sardis was a very important place of trade and uh, the culture was wealthy and self-sufficient and it seems to be the reason that when Jesus spoke to this church he said, I know your works, you have a reputation for being alive but you're dead. Wake up and strengthen what remains and is about to die. Remember them what you have received and heard. Keep it and repent. If you will not wake up, I will come like a thief. It seems as if uh, this city, like Western culture today, 
think of America, very wealthy, self-sufficient, strong military, uh, self-protective, uh, that it seems to breed uh, a type of Christian that uh, falls into a, a slumber and isn't depending on the Lord the way uh, we as Christians should. And that seems to be the case here in Sardis, which was a uh, Greco-Roman uh, city. This city, a uh, beautiful city, we're standing here inside a Jewish synagogue. There was a very strong Jewish presence here. And also uh, there was this, a huge Roman uh, temple to the goddess Artemis and a, a Roman gymnasium. Uh, Sardis, because of the discovery of gold, uh, it was known as the city from which f coins were first uh, produced. The inventor of money as we know it came out of Sardis uh, in the 5th century BC uh, because of the gold and silver they were able to separate. So Sardis was a place of, of uh, great commerce, great wealth. The Apostle John is said to have come here and uh, this is one of the first churches in this area uh, and early converts were from his ministry, the Apostle John. And uh, the lifestyle, of course, uh, very tempting to be pulled into the world. And so this is Sardis that we're standing in. Beautiful ruin here. This beautiful day, I'm now in uh, Philadelphia. It's the sixth church to which John uh, wrote the letter in the book of Revelation. Acts out of Revelation 3, verses 7 to 13. I'll read a couple of the verses because it's instructive. To the angel at the church of Philadelphia write the words of the Holy One, the true one who has the key of David, who opens and no one will shut, who shuts and no one will open. I know your works. Behold, I've set before you an open door which no one can shut. I know that you have but little power and yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. Uh, Philadelphia, I'm calling, I would call the little church that could because it was uh, planted in a, a city as an outpost from uh, Pergamum and it was on the border of Lydia where many of the seven churches were in Phrygia. And so it was kind of an outpost church where uh, it was a small church, it seems to indicate even from this uh, letter, that didn't have a lot of strength yet, uh, but had great opportunity in terms of missionary fervor and missionary work. Philadelphia, of course, means a city of brotherly love. It was planted by uh, a king uh, in Pergamum who uh, started the, the city in honor of his brother whom he loved. Uh, the valley in which this uh, city is located had was well known for the grapes that it grew and the wine. In fact, uh, the Roman poet Virgil actually wrote about the excellence of the wine in this area. And the city also was called Little Athens. And we're standing in the remains of a church uh, after St. John that was built after St. John in the site of Philadelphia. Uh, but uh, the city of Philadelphia was called Little Athens because of the many pagan temples and public buildings that adorned this particular place. The modern name for the city now is Alashir. And so, uh, as the sixth church to which he writes, it's one of the only two, chur two churches, Smyrna and this church, are the only two churches that had no corrective rebukes in the actual letter to the churches, uh, more commendations than anything else. And so I'll just close with the last part of the commendation uh, where he said, I've set before you an open door that no man can shut. You have a little power, and yet you have kept my word, and you have not denied my name. And so uh, I'll make you a pillar in the temple of my God. There's pillars around us here, which is appropriate. And never more shall you go out, but I will write upon you a new name, the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down from the God out of heaven and with my own new name. We're at uh, the site of Laodicea. It's the seventh church, the last church that received the message from Jesus via the Apostle John. And it's the one uh, church that has no commendation or praise at all for anything that it's doing right. 
So, and it's the church also, as you recall, that says, I wish that you were either hot or cold, but because you're lukewarm, I would uh, spit you out of my mouth. For you say I'm rich, and I have prospered, and I need nothing, realizing that you are really wretched, pitiable, poor, blind, and naked. And that's out of Revelation 3, verse 14 to 22. Laodicea was a very wealthy uh, city. It was at a trade hub uh, from Ephesus coming inland and then from Philadelphia coming southward. One of the most prosperous, flourishing cities in Asia Minor at the time. It was built on seven hills like the city of Rome. And the people here uh, were very wealthy. And you can see why John wrote this letter to them. Uh, the Christian also were very, there were many Christians here. Paul wrote uh, of the Laodiceans four times. He mentions this church in the book of Colossians where he encourages uh, Epaphras to visit them and to encourage them. He also says that he has a concern for them as a church. Uh, because of this warning that he gives the church in Laodicea, uh, John tells them to repent and uh, encourages them uh, that to buy from him gold refined by fire that you may be rich and white garments that you may clothe yourself and the shame of your nakedness may not appear, and salve for your eyes that you may see. We don't know how the Laodicean church uh, responded to this. We know in ensuing centuries there was uh, a major hub for the, uh, the Orthodox church. There was a bishop here, a metropolitan here. Uh, but sadly, this place which was subject to earthquakes numerous times. In fact, it was so wealthy, such a wealthy city, that one of the earlier earthquakes that devastated the city, the Laodiceans didn't even ask for any aid financially. They were wealthy enough to pay for their own recovery of, of in rebuilding the city. But in latter years, in latter centuries, the earthquake, several earthquakes so devastated this city that it was never rebuilt. So we don't know if that's a result of the church not repenting, but it's emblematic of a church that doesn't respond to the call from God to turn to him and to find their wealth in him and not in their own self-sufficiency and their own resources. Uh, because it is located on a hill, you can see for miles and miles all around here. And it, uh, Laodicea is near Hierapolis, only probably uh, six miles from here. It can be seen from here. And it was a source of uh, thermal sulfur pools. Uh, and I sometimes wonder if in this writing, uh, the Lord wasn't thinking about the, the hot pools uh, of Hierapolis, now called Pamukkale. But uh, at any rate, uh, it's a sober warning for us today uh, to find our wealth and our strength in the Lord.